The Actalus Empire is rich in heirs, the strongest of which takes the throne. This means that whoever survives by killing others becomes emperor. Of the children of the previous ruler, the youngest took the throne. In a succession ceremony at the age of 13, he killed all his siblings to become the crown prince. The boy then braided the hair of the slain and brought it to the emperor and pointed at it with his sword. The wily father, impressed by the strength of the younger prince, praised his son in every possible way. And at that moment, a sword point stabbed into his majesty's chest. The young prince smiled innocently, standing in front of his father, who was choking on his blood. Then the boy said he was just bored of waiting. That's why he wanted to ascend the throne now. He was annoyed that there was someone more important than him. It was none other than the current emperor of Actalus, Raniero Actalus. And the young ones were asked if they wished to live under the patronage of the god Ilra, so that their relationship would be strong for all eternity? It was then that the protagonist realized she had been sold as a bride to a ruthless emperor. He stares intently, demanding an immediate response. And the lady responded positively. Well, they could go on until he got bored. In that case, the newlyweds could exchange rings. We should get this over with. Mistress thought about the most important thing was not to drop it. Otherwise, her head would fall off her shoulders in the next five minutes. Well, then the newlyweds could seal those vows with a kiss. Oh, I think that's about to happen. Wait, why didn't anything happen? The guy was just trying to skip the moment? Ah, seriously, how could this even happen? The emperor thanked God. What? What does that mean? Mademoiselle didn't know how it ended. But Mr. said that if Miss had opened her eyes five seconds later, he would have just died of boredom. It's hard to believe, but it was at this point that the lady hit the novelization, discovered that she had been reborn, that she had been reborn at a wedding ceremony with a wacky evil emperor. He even killed her first love holy knight Eden. Serafina, who couldn't do that, lost control and went into a rage. Then his majesty fell into the trap of fate. This is the prologue of the short story, Flowers grow even in the abyss, even though there are different characters in the work. Madame has become an empress heroine about whom less is known. Why is she so scarce in the story? In a society where everyone can only have one spouse and divorce is impossible, in the Actalus Empire a second marriage is only allowed after the death of the partner. So when the emperor kidnapped the saint, the first thing he did was cut off his wife's head. So the empress, whose name is never even given, is beheaded at the beginning of the novel, and that's exactly what Miss becomes. Wait, is this punishment for the negative review she left on the novel? Milady had reread many books on the rebirth of souls, but don't the heroes inhabit the body of the villain? They change the course of the original story by avoiding the misdeeds committed by the villain himself, don't they? But the girl moved into the most inconspicuous minor character. I wish she was the villain. Then at least she could have tried to go against the original story. But what could Madame do now? If she had come before the marriage, the first thing she would have done would have been to avoid it, like faking her own death by throwing the doll off a cliff, or tame the emperor. Had Mademoiselle gone mad? Mealy could already imagine how his majesty would react to someone trying to tame him thoughtlessly. Maybe Miss would have tried if she had nine lives, but not now. She didn't want to die so easily, so the only option left was to live as if she were already dead, but not quite. It was said that the Reniero never visited the empress after his marriage. The past empress tried to protest this cautiously, but the lady reminded him of himself too often, so the gentleman got rid of her as soon as he brought the saint. Miss will not do such rash things. And the day the Raniero would go to the temple, pretend to be dead and run away. Madame did not think he would seek confirmation of his wife's death. Still, she was murdered so that a saint could take her place. And if the empress hadn't interfered with her husband, he wouldn't have bothered. Wait, it turns out it's easier than Mademoiselle thought? It seems to be going well. Madame knew she was worrying for nothing. And then the Lord asked the empress, how long did she plan to stand there and pretend she didn't notice her husband around? What? Was she ignoring him? This is not good. Milady had already decided to live discreetly, but in a second, she just blew it. It's a talent. Why was his wife avoiding him? Why would the protagonist say such a thing? She wouldn't dare to act so disrespectfully. At that moment, the lady kneeled down. Oh, what a shame. Well, at least Miss was able to quickly answer the question at hand. That smoothed things out a bit. Raniero hates boredom. Everything in his presence must go smoothly. 
Even Serafina in the novel was tortured if she was slow to respond. Countless servants have suffered because of their failure to correct something that is not to the guy's liking. You have five seconds to answer. But, nevertheless, however, these words are forbidden. The Lord told the Empress to raise her head. He will give her a chance to explain herself. It was because the lady had a chronic illness that made her faint with her eyes open. So now his wife was yelling at him? Oh, Miss duplicated her words, only in a quieter tone. Mr. said that the letter he got from the Unro Kingdom didn't mention that. Uh, it just happens quite rarely. At such a moment, the protagonist's brain was working at full speed. Oh, perhaps the lady was so affected by His Majesty's presence. My lady said that she thought it was rather difficult for a timid person like her to bear it. Right, in that case. Is it His Majesty's fault? Oh, Madame knew something like this would happen. Well, anyone who looked at the sun would go blind. But no one, no one blames the sun. I see well then. Hell, let the young man go already. Mistress has already run out of imagination. What else did he want? But Miss must be lucky if he hadn't pulled out his sword yet. Was Mademoiselle planning on not looking at the Emperor for the rest of her life because she was afraid of fainting? Of course, if His Majesty would allow it, Miss would be happy. The master authorized it. The only question is, what exactly? Did the protagonist allow his wife to watch or not watch? You must answer within five seconds. But if Madame makes the wrong choice, she'll lose her head. Ah, which one should I choose? Miss assumed he had permission to look, right? The young man complimented her and said it was fun. He made the right decision. Now he's not bored. Yip, 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 yip. Did Mistress make that sound because of her chronic illness? Yep. No, it was because she was still alive. Milady wasn't too proud. If she did something wrong, she would bow down and respond immediately. And Mademoiselle was clever. If the Empress is really like that, that's a good thing. The girl amused him, so her husband will reward her. The main character could ask any question, and Mister would graciously answer it. That's the reward? If he doesn't like the question, he'll do something outrageous again. Madame heard that His Majesty chose her himself. Why her? Ah, that's not an interesting question. Too predictable. Mister disappointed. You could just go mad with boredom answering it. My lady was lucky, for the emperor had promised to spare her. After the announcement of his impending marriage, aristocrats and kings sent him portraits of their daughters. There were so many of them, just a huge number. Enough to fill all the walls of this room. The man ordered these portraits to be hung here. Why, the girl thought. Why? To examine their appearance? Actually, he wasn't interested in such things. Mr. can't tell people apart because they look alike. Huh. His Majesty's face is the most beautiful in this world. Who would want to look at the others? They're all just scary squids. Huh? What's that hole on the wall? The young man said that he just sat down like this and threw the dagger, and it hit the left eye of the current empress. Ha 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 ha. It was very entertaining. Mr. asked to be allowed to take back what he said about boredom and craziness. But Miss wasn't funny at all. So tedious and unfunny. Sir had had enough. He would go to sleep for now. No. He said he was happy with his choice of the lady, that an empress like her wasn't so bad. Speaking of which, if you think about it, what is the empress' name? The consort was curious. You have to give your name. What was the girl's name? Her name is Angelica Vineyard de Unro. What do they call the lady next door? They call her Angie. That's how... Let Angie keep it up. Soon Mr. will get tired of it all and have no problem getting rid of her. Mistress smiled and said she would make it up to you. Well, good. After that, His Majesty bowed out, and the lady lay contentedly on the floor. Ha ha, she survived. It was good that the girl remembered the name at once. Madame was not sure that the Empress, when Raniero met Serafina, was Angelica, because her name was not mentioned in the novel. Turns out Angelica was murdered shortly after the wedding, but it seems the wife of the Raniero in the novel was another girl. There was talk of a fifth Empress. The wedding day is safely over. Everything should be all right now, right? Ugh! The gentleman said his consort was fidgeting. He counted to three, one, two. Madame realized she had to get up before the guy counted to three. Why is His Majesty still here? Mister said he didn't feel like going to his room. Did Miss what? Say that out loud? No, but the master said even an idiot could tell from my lady's face what she was thinking. The protagonist couldn't believe she woke up after nine o'clock. The empress is lazy. Nine o'clock? The imperial couple woke up so late. But why didn't anyone wake her up? 
the young man said that his spouse was absolutely uninteresting, monotonous and boring. A bore, Miss was thinking about what the gentleman had said yesterday, that he was glad he had chosen her. At that moment, the headmaid came up and told Her Majesty that they would help her get ready. Did she not wish to have a bath first? The girl would trust them. She lay in the bathtub and thought that was enough. Raniero said she was monotonous and boring. He would never come to her again. For now, one must look for a way to escape from this place. What's the date today? The 19th of May was in the morning. The 19th of May, Raniero and Serafina met in the freezing winter. Until then, there are still seven months to go. In the original story, in the middle of winter, the emperor met the saint at the temple of Thunia. Seven months, not such a short time. Until last night, all mistress remembered of Angelica was her name. As time went on, the memories were passed on to her. She is the second princess of the kingdom of Unro. She has an older brother, an older sister, and a younger brother. That there were memories of family relationships is a good sign. Angelica is a member of the royal family, so she must have studied basic geography and history. My lady had a lot of useful information in addition to the original history. For example, what is the best country to flee to? It should be a country whose borders are close to the palace. Also, the place should not be hostile to the empire or closely guarded. It doesn't matter if the country is weak or strong. By spring, the empire will fall. Serafina, the saint of Tunia, is the protagonist of the original story. The Holy Knight Eden is her unrequited love. The protagonist, Raniero, is a brilliant but despotic monarch. If Raniero kills the Holy Knight Eden and follows the path of the Serafina disaster, the empire that depended on a brilliant monarch will simply fall. The main goal at the moment is to survive. The headmaid, in a moment of reflection, approached the lady and said that she had prepared breakfast for the empress. Milady wondered if she could take her meals in her room in such comfort. Maids, much more professional than they are shown in movies or novels. She just does what she has to do and doesn't try to please or befriend the lady. It's just the perfect distance. Madame was going to run away from there, but getting closer to her for no reason could get her in trouble, right? Mademoiselle thought of trying to act like a cold-blooded empress, so she turned to the maids and said she hadn't even heard their names yet. Would they please introduce themselves? The mother of the Marquis Jacques apologized, for she was late in her greeting. Behind her was the Count of Luck's wife, Miran. She is honored to serve Her Majesty. Marquise, Countess, Duchess, they all come from famous families. But what is this feeling of discomfort? Is something wrong? The women worked so hard. It was just their job. Everything there was new to the new empress, so she would appreciate being guided until Miss got used to the place. What are the ladies' plans for today? She doesn't have any official meetings today, so she can rest. Well, in that case, my lady will take the day off. Well, she's got seven months to go, so it's all right if she takes a day off. The next day it happened again. The girl again had no business, and a day later, and another day later, the empress had no official business. Now mistress finally understood what that feeling was. The maids just wouldn't let her do her work. Common sense suggests that Her Majesty is not required to do much. Checking various departments, approving the palace budget, making friends with noble ladies and other people. The protagonist needs to familiarize herself with the last year's paperwork, then she can get to work. Did you mean to tell her that Miss First should ask about it? That's the job of the assistants, isn't it? Now Mistress understands why maids are true professionals. They behave politely so they don't get caught, and if my lady speaks up about a problem, will be the only odd person out. She is not accepted and treated like an outsider. Honestly, it's infuriating. Oh, so comfortable. The missus plumped herself just right on the bed, but the lady couldn't keep it up. The princess will obey the mad emperor. The maid had heard that the girl was marrying the actalus emperor. She just refused to believe it. Speaking of which, Angie brought a maid with her. Her name was Tits. Madame turned to the headmaid and asked her to listen. She wanted to ask a question. Yes, of course, let her ask it. The protagonist brought her maid with her. Where is she now? Mademoiselle hasn't seen her anywhere. Miss was told that in order to become a worthy maid of the Actalus, one had to undergo the training anew. But why was nothing said to the mistress in that case? This silence, if the empress had been a Ragniero, would have gotten an answer right away. My lady said she had nothing against her training. But isn't it strange that her mistress knows nothing? Could you bring her in? Madame just wanted to take a look. Since Miss didn't ask, the headmaid thought she already knew. That sly fox. 
Does that mean she wants to fight her? Mademoiselle apologized and said it was her fault. If she apologizes first, she'll have nothing to say. Is it pride that feeds her? So what about the tits? Marquis Jacques's mother told her son that she thought the girl was an idiot, but she turned out to be a real monster. The boy told his mother to calm down and asked what really happened. That girl wanted to fight them, some lousy little country girl who doesn't know her place. At that moment, her daughter Sylvia came in and asked what was wrong. The woman replied that if her daughter were the empress, she would not have to worry so much. No one ever objected to this child becoming the emperor's wife. How many people lined up to please them, for they had nominated a pretender to be the new empress. However, the second princess of the Unro kingdom became the next empress. The headmaid said it was a pity that her daughter had missed her marriageable age, waiting for an answer from his majesty. But the missus was utterly shocked that the girl who had been fortunate enough to become empress was looking at her with such frightened eyes. Sylvia replied that still, it was the emperor's choice. You shouldn't hate him so much, and asked her brother to say something. The woman said that this good-for-nothing girl must have some incredible skills in bed. Jacques's sister replied that the mother should be careful what she said. She didn't want to hear anything. Mrs. had waited so long, and her daughter's value had just dropped. It's all worthless now. After that, Miss ran away in tears. The Marquis told her mother not to worry. His Majesty doesn't visit his wife after midnight, does he? He's right, but, uh... The gentleman said he was a deputy minister and a marquis. The emperor has no interest in that woman. If they find an excuse, he will destroy her himself. Mother knows his character, doesn't she? All they need is an excuse, Madame realized. This girl definitely has a lot of flaws. They just need to find the right time and inform his majesty. Yes, of course. Even the emperor makes decisions based on personal gain. He has one principle to which he adheres. Anything that harms the country must be eliminated immediately. That's why the empire is in a period of unprecedented prosperity. All they have to do is make a plan. The time has come to approve the budget. Only the emperor and empress have the authority to do so. But Her Majesty is not working at all. She wanders around looking for her maid. Everyone is well aware that this is an obstacle to the prosperity of the Actalus. The few days since Tit's return had passed completely quietly. As the lady thought, she knows Angelica well and all her preferences. Meanwhile, the abuse of the Marquis Jacques's mother continued. The protagonist decided to ignore them completely. But that wasn't the only problem. If she had noticed it at the time, this wouldn't have happened. The emperor summoned his consort. No matter how much she thought about it, the culprit was probably one of the maids. But which one? Okay, since things had come to this, one should bow as low as possible. His majesty said that the empress is bowing her head, not even realizing what's going on. Is there something wrong with her legs? The lady replied that they were a little weak, but it was not a problem. Really? Then let's continue. Marquis Jacques, the deputy minister, reported that he has prepared the budget for the third quarter. However, he has a problem with the allocation of funds for Her Majesty's palace. He has asked to ask the empress herself. What? What budget? The lord didn't ask anything yet, only gave the order to continue. Yes, of course. The ruler did not ask for an answer. The empress is very bold. She's got a lot of nerve, which is why he can't believe she's part of the imperial family. What were they thinking when they approved such a large budget? About that, Jacques said that the empress indulged in entertainment instead of taking care of the palace, since she had no intention of performing her duties, set the cost of having her work done by the debtors. All this time, the Marquise's mother did not ask Madame to do business, for the sake of it. The deputy minister said that, in addition, the entertainment expenses amounted to an unimaginable sum. Ministers turned a blind eye to the situation, but he simply cannot remain silent. Mademoiselle realized it was a disaster. Almost everything he says is a lie. But the lady has no way to defend her position. All this time the maids have been bullying her, but it's only a tit that will stand up to her. The emperor asked what the marquis intended to do. Mr. replied that he had no purpose at all. He simply wanted the truth to be known, given his loyalty to the imperial family. It is for his majesty alone to decide. It's his decision to make. Ha ha ha. For something like this? Jacques said it was an important matter. He needed his decision. Milady thought about the fact that it is true that the Raniero cares a lot about the country to stay in power. The situation is too dangerous. To him, the dull would be guilty, and the cheerful uninvolved. He must think the Empress is terribly careless to ask for such an absurd sum. This problem can be solved by simply revising the budget. 
Trying to convince the Ragniero with such a boring excuse would get him nowhere. Didn't they know what kind of man he was? What's wrong with all of them? It can't be. Don't tell Madame that the girl was the only one who understood what was on his mind. The servants believe that the Emperor is a cruel, pleasure-seeking man, but they are under the illusion that he genuinely cares for this country. You can literally read in his gaze that he's going to be pissed if he's not shown something interesting. The protagonist turned to his majesty and said that she had behaved immorally and brazenly. She should have discussed the budget with him first. It was her fault that he had to deal with such a boring matter. To the emperor, who had had to endure such a tedious event, she apologized and offered some entertainment to lift her spirits. So what? It's a manhunt. It's not a manhunt. The three of them are the prey. What did Madam say? The master asked me to continue. All the inhabitants of the Actilus Empire are descendants of Actilla, the god of war. My lady has heard that anyone there can become a soldier if they have the right skills. Perfect prey for this kind of entertainment, isn't it? I see. That's just perfect. Manhunting is a method from the original work. Miss knew he'd be interested. Unless. Then the protagonist would have to become prey, too. I don't care. She'll go all in. That's why she said that the master knew that his wife was sick. After all, she had just recently arrived in Actalus. Is it fun to let a sick rabbit out on the hunting grounds? So she wasn't going to participate? How could His Highness think such a thing? She's honored. She was sure to be a worthy prey by winter. And so, in order not to miss out on any possible fun, she asked that the Angelica hunt be postponed for a little while. Then Jacques told the Emperor that it was just absurd. No, wasn't it reasonable? Well, as expected. Let the Marquis come to his senses. Does he care so much about justification? The same goes for the budget problem. do what? If they understood the girl at once, there would be no need to disturb his majesty. To make up for his precious time, they must become worthy prey. Bravo, that was pretty good for their empress. How could his majesty make the old mother of the deputy minister do such cruel things? He asked to be punished, better than him. Cruel? How could he say such things? Have men not heard her majesty? They are honored to be prey to his amusement. As the empress said, are not the three of them guilty? The marquis was talking about how the girl was very stupid, and it was her fault she couldn't talk them out of going there. They're willing to do that? Just to resolve her retail with the lady. They couldn't do that. Raniero, he was aware of the marquis Jacques' attitude toward him. The marquise's younger sister had not been chosen to be the empress. He knew it would end this way. But he did nothing about it. He has no right to worry about it. If only Sylvia had become the empress, would the plot have changed? His majesty said, lifting the girl's head. Not bad. Why did he suddenly decide to kiss my lady? She should hold on. Madame is never wrong. You bet. One mistake, and she's gone. How long will Madame be running away? Mademoiselle said this throne was his. Ha 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 ha. This throne is too big for such a little girl. Honestly speaking, Miss felt like a doggy, need to be patient. Hmm, what did the girl like? Uh, yeah, she liked it a lot. The next day, there was a great change at Her Majesty's castle. Because the Marquis Jacques had become a prey, his mother had to resign as headmaid. For the imperial maids, the vacated position seemed like a burden, but it was taken by a sissy. There were no others willing, so the protagonist was grateful for her courage. Also, the lady apologized for not taking care of the maid lately. It was okay. Not only was she being treated like a stranger, the maid knew she had nothing to do with it. She didn't seem to notice anything. The girl mentally apologized for pretending to be her mistress. With the change of the head maid, rumors spread. The empress was no longer looked down upon. What flowers did her majesty like? Oh, they needn't worry, the lady wasn't picky. So she thought a bright yellow would suit her. The main character was an ordinary person. She's only a reader who knows the original novel. The rumors of what happened to Marquis Jacques must have spread by now. Miss, on the other hand, was just trying to be a goody-goody amidst the rumors that spread. After the letter, she began to be regarded in secular society as a fiery and arrogant empress. At first, this bothered her, but, after all, Madame was only doing her duties, and she had had a rather rough day. It seems like she was in trouble. The duties of an empress are much more complicated than the girl thought. Cecian said that she just wasn't used to life here yet. Since she had been in this body, Angie had yet to fulfill the potential she had been given. Landscaping and gardening, salons and ballroom audits, and the summer solstice, the main holiday in Actilus. The symbol of the past life of the Actilla deity is the sun. As Miss understood, 
This festival is held during the summer solstice, when the sun remains at its zenith the longest. Who is it? Ah, she... Well, is the girl going to remain silent like that? Well, she's Sylvia Jacques, sweet sister of the Marquis of Jacques. What's she doing there? She requests an audience with Her Majesty. However, no one knows the reason. So much time has passed since the Emperor's decision, and she only shows up now? The maid said Miss requested an audience as early as the day after the verdict. Seriously? She's been waiting five days? Without food or baths? The mistress ordered her to be admitted. Mademoiselle said she was delighted to meet you, and she said she was the daughter of Roberta Jacques, Henry Jacques's younger sister, Sylvia Jacques. It was too late. The empress was sorry she had to be there for five whole days, but if the lady wanted to ask for her indulgence, let her just leave. Not at all. Everyone reaps what they sow. Wow, isn't that what she came here for? The girl started to say that the moment her mother left the position of Her Majesty's headmaid, then she realized this was her chance. Milady was asking, instead of her lying mother, she was asking to be allowed to become an Angie's maid. What? The daughter of the protagonist's enemy wants to serve her? It's not like she's just trying to jump at the opportunity. To get revenge on her while the guards are away? Mistress hoped Madame understood that they were not in a position right now for her to trust her with such a job. Yes, my lady understood, however. Goodness, why is she shaking so much? Miss will be shivering soon enough. What other intentions could a girl have? She was raised as the emperor's consort, and as a servant for the empress, who would become a friend to her. Most people who grow up locked up have no will of their own, and now that her family has become prey, she simply has nowhere else to go. Sylvia belongs to a fallen family of aristocrats, and she really has nowhere to go now. At least she's not lying about that. But even so, the girl's family, my lady is very painful to think of them. Despite the way they treated her, they were her own people. But more importantly, she had a simple desire to survive. And that's when the protagonist realized that she too was a Sylvia, and that she too wanted to survive. The only one who wasn't moved by the lady's story was Ranyoro. Though she had left a gap in the Empress's defenses, she could not afford to trust her. Who knows what was on her mind? Mistress promised her that she would inform her of her decision soon. However, ah, what was that? Why was the Emperor in front of her? The Mister asked if suddenly squealing at night was another chronic disease of the lady. Wh what brings the Mister there? Does he have to have a reason? What? It's going to be problematic if he's planning on visiting like that. The protagonist thought this would be a good time to visit, didn't he? Madame hoped that the man was not there out of a sense of duty. Wow, is the dear wife starting to stutter? That's a shame. The young man pulled her to him and afterward asked if he should have stopped. Did the master ask if his wife's day went well? And what about his majesty? He was amused. The hunters had begun their training. Mister added two rules. She wanted to know. First, the prey must also have weapons. If they can survive for three hours, they win and are released. By the way, the protagonist added these rules and didn't consult. My lady wasn't upset, was she? The lady replied that if her spouse was happy, it was okay, wasn't it? So how did the empress spend her day? Mademoiselle was busy with reports and a plan to improve the garden. As a matter of fact, the emperor has ordered her to be brought in. Should be fun. What? What fun? If she took part in the game as a hunter, wouldn't that help right the wrongs of the past and prove her loyalty to her mistress? Huh. Let Selvia be the hunter. The main character wanted her to kill her mother and brother with her own hands? Isn't that a great idea? The girl, however, wondered if Sylvia Jacques intended to harm her. She would be interested, wouldn't she? Milady was grateful for the understanding. The anxieties of ordinary people were all too obvious. The man said to bring Sylvia Jacques. The condition is that if she performs well as a hunter, she will be assigned as a maid. Yes, of course. The young man thought it was a good idea. But what was that look on his wife's face? In that case, he would give the order to the Marquis Jacques's sister. It must have hurt her to even speak. The girl was so weak. By Mr. Standards, there are only weaklings in this world. Raniero Actalus. He was born in the body of a human, but is actually a deity who considers humans useless gnats. There was nothing he could do but become violent. And though his childhood could not be called unhappy, Raniero was born pure evil. The Lord tipped a glass of wine over to the Empress. She was frightened, so she should immerse herself in pleasure and momentarily forget her fear. Absolute evil, but he's stronger and more beautiful than anyone else. It's all right. My lady will try not to make any mistakes this time. 
The young ones were lying down after the first night, and the protagonist said that the madam was not hardy at all. She's small, too. It's hard. How could madam become a hunter with a body like that? That's right. My lady was also supposed to be the emperor's winter prey. It just slipped her mind. In fact, the girl did not plan to become a prey. Madame will wait for winter, and when the Raniero goes on his expedition, everything will fall into place. He will meet Serafina and will no longer look for his wife. The master never told the empress about the second rule. Mademoiselle must also become a hunter. The lady replied that she was not good enough to take on that task. Mr. replied that there was nothing to worry about. The game won't do her any harm, but that's the rule. No, is Raniero a hunter? Sylvia wouldn't have survived her encounters with this evil. And when she died, she'd take her with her too, so she wouldn't get bored along the way. The master realizes that the rules were meaningless. He added them knowing everything. Well, when is the hunt? Milady hadn't heard of the date. They'll open it on the summer solstice. Mademoiselle will probably be very busy. It's only a month away. Miss had originally intended to strike up friendships with the nobles in anticipation of the gala, but all social events were canceled. Well, what is it? It's impossible to even keep track of the point. The girl was allowed to watch the training, so she was there. These two are obviously very talented. All the inhabitants of Actalus, including women and children, learn martial arts so that they can be called to war at a moment's notice. It was said, originally, she had neglected her training, but everything changed after His Majesty visited the lady yesterday. It was Duchess Nerma, Angelica's maid, who spoke. Madame was sure the woman knew about the two new rules. They were now looking for the best teacher, no matter how good the teacher was, in one month. Mistress needs to learn how to use a bow. What? But, if my lady fights at close quarters, she loses. She needs to keep her distance. She needs to control the situation from a great distance. The main character was very much asking to be taught how to use a bow so that Angie could stay on the battlefield as long as possible. Goodness, the onion, heavier than the girl had thought. The Duchess apologized for saying that, but she'd never once heard that it was so hard to hold. Not even from a ten-year-old child. Miss realized it was time to try again. She is different from the inhabitants of Actalus owners of strong bodies and great strength. You have to try to get at least near the target today. Mademoiselle doesn't even hope for the center. The Emperor has heard that Sylvia is eager to become the Empress's maid. Did she realize the position she was putting herself in? Yes, she did. Okay, but there was a condition. So if the girl fulfills it, she has to become a hunter. What? That's, well, expected reaction. How predictable. The mister had her taken away. What about the Empress? All the events that were planned have been canceled. And? It seems my lady is trying to learn archery. Oh, what a coward. However, Her Majesty fainted. And what does that mean? A bed? Did the main character faint on the training ground? Should have listened to the Duchess of Namu and stopped. Angelica was a princess, after all. The girl thought she was learning to ride horses and had become hardy during that time. So the lady had been weak since she was a child? Why did the lady speak as if she didn't remember anything from her childhood? Madame was frightened and asked His Majesty why he had appeared so suddenly. Didn't the missus think she was being too boring? About what happened yesterday. The emperor was told that she had fainted. The young man had already decided that something terrible had happened. The man never thought she would faint from walking on the training ground. The girl B thanked him for his concern. The empress was still very pale. Was it the pain that made her body shiver? Angie wanted to rest. When is he going to leave? Hmm. No matter how much the protagonist thought she was too weak and stupid, was it incomprehensible that she needed to rest if she felt tired? A perfect predator like him wouldn't be able to understand the mistress. The girl did nothing but faint. This country can't realize that people may not have that kind of power. Milady replied that she knew that if one was tired, one should just rest. Miss started to cry. She was really trying hard not to die. Mr. replied that she wasn't going to die. What a liar! My lord ordered the Duchess to bring cold water and silk towels. It seems the Empress is very ill. Monsieur will take care of her. Was the towel too wet? No. Honestly, the protagonist assumed that's not how it worked. Really? That's why he asked for the maid. Because of Her Majesty's physique, the temperature rises just from one movement. The protagonist has never seen such a thing before, the maid replied. That it's because she's too weak. Her body resists when she does things she can't do. The girl was so pathetic, with that sickly look on her face. The emperor was beginning to get wildly annoyed. This body, a warning. Raniero screams with his whole body. 
Dismissed. My lady said she was hungry, and could the maid bring her something to eat? What? Uh, yes. Ten minutes later, the food was served. His majesty fed his wife. He said she even had a small mouth. Tomorrow we'll have to stay in the palace. Wow, was his majesty worried? The protagonist said he wanted to see this shitty training. It's just not possible. He hoped it would be fun to watch the lady run away. But if this continues, won't they see the hunter become the prey? Just as Mr. Thought, she won't be able to entertain her spouse on a winter hunt. It seems to be too much for him. What does a man get after a long wait? What is it? Though this time the lady had the role of the hunter, in a few months she would be the prey. Of course, the lady was going to make a break for it before his meeting with Serafina, but Angie asked her hubby to believe in her. Now they're looking for a mentor to help them get the most out of their training. A mentor? Yes, because otherwise Miss would be of no use to the emperor at all. Not at all. Huh? Really? Yes, it's true. The girl promised that she would find an excellent tutor. Okay, but my lady hasn't found anyone yet, has she? Uh-huh. Well, in that case, the Raniero will be her mentor. Huh? What? Did his majesty need to repeat himself? And no, my lady has already heard everything. Mistress will never forget the time her husband spent on her. She will do her best. Madness. The medicine worked. The lady woke up. Maybe it was because she had been courted by the emperor last night, and immediately Miss fell asleep. Raniero was by her side until midnight. Mistress was told he did not return to his room until dawn. So, when did she have to be at practice? The maid doesn't know. What? The maid should have asked him. Sissian, we have to hurry. Uh, where's the girl's bow? Here it is. Mademoiselle went straight to the practice field. She had to be there before her husband. Luckily, he hadn't arrived yet. At that moment, the gentleman wished her good morning. It was now past ten o'clock. She was apparently in no hurry. Mister had been there for two hours. What's that in the lady's hands? Angie was still too weak. Her hands could only handle a bow. Huh? Miss never thought to use the weapon that's perfect for her? Well, my lady asked me to bring her a bow. It's much lighter than the one mistress used before, and it feels better in her hands. But any bow is useless if the archer can't draw the bowstring. In fact, the protagonist was really grateful, thanks to him. The protagonist took the girl's face and said she had a fever. The medicine didn't seem to help. It's about time we started. What? He won't even reprimand the empress for being late? An hour later. Did Mademoiselle know that sixty people had been killed by that trick? Oh, let the young man spare her after all. Raniero got tired of practicing on targets in less than thirty minutes. Then he got a wooden sword from somewhere. And they immediately started practicing. The best practice is real combat conditions. Hell, Angie's swordsmanship was worthless. The master said she was hopeless. Too predictable. Aga, with the same motion, the man could have slit her throat. What was the lady looking at? Does she believe the emperor now? Yes, of course. Is the girl going to tell him that her eyes are droopy because of a chronic illness too? Miss didn't even notice him. One swing and she's gone. The main character said that the difference between them was enormous. Did Madame think she'd be spared in combat situations too? And no. Eventually, the Raniero began to explain the basics of fencing to his wife step by step. Should move her waist if she wanted to adjust her distance with her opponent. Proper use of her shoulders, elbows, and wrists are the foundation of sword trajectory control. Although Ranero complained that she couldn't follow his lead, it seemed that the master had no intention of stopping her training. Someone who just can't stand all this tedium volunteers for it? Mademoiselle was very grateful for the training. She would try her best no matter how long it took. It was really interesting. No matter how large the Actalus Empire was, rumors spread with the speed of a forest fire. Although not officially announced, rumors of the hunting festival spread throughout aristocratic society. It will be held on the summer solstice in the new hunting grounds. Sylvia Jacques, the emperor and empress are hunters. All would be well, but during one of the training sessions, Miss was injured, and the emperor took care of her majesty for a long time. He waited for her for two hours, didn't scold her for her helplessness, even gave her an onion. Everyone knew about it from the nobility of the capital to the neighboring country. Well, what can you do? That's the job of the empress maids. They will hide the unnecessary truth and embellish the emperor and empress a bit. The girl must say that it strengthened her position little by little. One way or another, Miss was planning to escape anyway. She didn't want to become someone else's cause for discussion. 
Now the main character needs to play the role of an exemplary wife of the emperor. Who knows when will decide to show up another Marquis Jacques. W what was that in her chambers? These are all gifts from the emperor. Is this for the whole empire? This is only a portion of his majesty's gifts. It takes time for rumors to reach the villages. There was a reason the duchess had been fawning over her lately. She would have liked it if she hadn't been a servant to Roberta Jacques in the past. Mademoiselle read the letter where the gentleman wrote about how he was already just looking forward to the hunt. I wonder what she will accomplish this month. By the way, when will the hunting grounds be ready? They say it won't be long now, about three days left. No matter how hard my lady tries, it won't be easy to defeat the Jacques family. Still, if not by force, my lady will win with information. Ugh, Madame was telling His Majesty that she just couldn't do it anymore. When Mr. looked at her, he was beginning to doubt the human race. How many times has Miss lost already? A thousand? Two thousand? They say genius doesn't extend to teaching others. Raniero only reprimands her whenever the lady moved wrong. Miss asked if they could practice running. She'll run right away. The young man doesn't even know? The emperor suggested we take a look at the hunting grounds. Finally, wow, just wow. In this empire, everything is done in a big way. These grounds are just gorgeous. You can see the other side of the world from this tower, for archery. The master said he wanted his wife to know. The protagonist was really working hard for her. Of course, she understood all of that. Does the girl like the grounds? Yes. Mr. said that at first he found it interesting and fun to teach the lady. But she is so clumsy that now the young man was quite concerned. Concerned? About her? The man trained her personally. He might have demanded a fee for that. Huntress in the summer and pray in the winter. The Lord was looking forward to it. After that day, time seemed to go twice as fast. Every morning, my lady practiced with the Ragnero. She prepared for the summer solstice from morning till night. Though the lady was saddened that she didn't see Sylvia again, she didn't have time to think about it now from the owl at all. Besides, just when Mademoiselle wanted to rest a little, her husband suddenly showed up at her castle. Again, again, all the maids run away when the emperor appears. Mistress should be braver. Is she worried again? She was scared. Even though they saw each other every morning, Milady was still scared. Was the girl a defenseless rabbit? Huh? Why was my lady looking at him like that? Did Miss look at him wrong somehow? The protagonist said that Mademoiselle laughed at him with her eyes. Oh, the Empress had become very impertinent. But it wasn't like that. It's just that he compared her to a small, cute, and fluffy animal. And she really wasn't like that. After saying that, Mr. In kissed his consort and began to unzip her dress. It can't be... What? Apparently it's in Angie's blood to be inept. And His Majesty has already found out everything she likes. I think they'll stop there. Eh? The young man knew that Miss was waiting. He was also very sorry. W what was Miss waiting for? It's... The Emperor was told that he was worn like that, with no extra clothes on his body. Is that why he undressed the lady? It's beautiful. My lady was grateful. It matched the color of her hair. Mr. hoped she would wear it to the summer solstice banquet. Now I see what the jewelry is for. The Lord said that if his wife died while hunting, this outfit would become ownerless. June. Day of the summer solstice. Today is a long-awaited and responsible day. Hunting will start in the afternoon. Since moving into this novel, her only goal has been survival. Well, it's time to go. In the meantime, it's time to come to her senses. There's still six months to go. If Mademoiselle gets over that hurdle, she'll run away like a rat from a sinking ship. She's not late today, is she? She was late. Her husband waited for her for two hours. If anyone sees this picture, they will know that the Empress and the Emperor are happy. How did the lady feel? Not bad. What will she do once she enters the hunting grounds? Milady will run to the center for a top position. Madame wants to avoid the melee. What's so funny about that? But Miss couldn't even withstand his blow. In fact, the protagonist survived for 30 seconds. Did she know why? Because Mr. was moving terribly slowly. At that moment, they began to announce the start of the festival in honor of the summer solstice. Does the lady have no appetite? No. Why would she be? Miss is so nervous about the hunt, she might not live to see the morning. After that, Mr. held out a glass to her. It was a gift. Raniero has a different drink. The color is like... The young man said to be sure to drink the glass to the bottom. Yes, one must do as the master says. Oh, Mademoiselle would even drink poison if he gave it to her. Now her hands and feet were burning. What did the girl take? Ah, the main character was saying that Angie needed a little rubbing. Pretty soon it would get good. 
Ha, 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 ha. What were they all doing? Why weren't they enjoying the viands? Ha, ha. Did those present not hear what the empress said? The flavor of the meat was very unusual. All senses heightened. It's delicious. Ever since the moment Raniero had given mistress the alcohol, she had been experiencing strange sensations. Her body felt hot and light, and then heavy again. Now, instead of being nervous, my lady is looking forward to starting the hunt. At that moment, a box was brought out. It's a gift from His Majesty. Soleo is a purified form of a deadly poison produced by poison frogs. His Majesty said his consort knew how to use it. Well, now everyone present could greet the Empress. What a shame! Everyone's here to watch the performance. But if they're outside the fence, they won't be able to see anything. The prey lurks in the hunting grounds. Where would the lady look for the Jacques family? Sylvia? She said she was fine and everything would be all right. Miss had to prove herself worthy of the hunt to become the protagonist's maid. There's no room for the faint of heart. A few weeks ago, Sylvia knelt before her. The pity Madame felt now seems false. If she does well, she'll be rewarded. If not, she'll just die. After that, the emperor came out. Did he not tell the empress that she would not die? What did the Raniero put in her drink? From then on, the hunting grounds were open. The order of entry into these territories is determined by status. Sylvia first, and then... The protagonist can't wait to get there. Miss finally gets it. That feeling of anticipation and excitement. She and the protagonist are very similar now. Mistress's body is so light now, it's funny. It's a good vantage point, with the hunting grounds in the palm of your hand. Mademoiselle applied the poison her husband gave her to the arrowheads. We need to focus on the sounds. What? Was Sylvia down there? The girl said she had something to tell her mistress. Her mother was behind her and said she would rip the heart out of her chest and give it to the emperor. The missus will sacrifice her to the god Actilla on this solstice day and survive because of it. Huh, that's the secret trick that the Jacques family has prepared? We need to aim. Tisk, she's been spotted, and the arrow missed. Oh, that was the damn bitch. At that moment, Sylvia fell on her mother, but she said she wasn't going to let it go. Mom wanted to kill her daughter to survive. But what about her? Huh? What about her? She wanted to live too. So she took a stone and bludgeoned her mother, saying she wanted to live and would find a new home. Mademoiselle was coming down and thought that the Raniero would wish he had not seen it. Then she approached the would-be maid, most likely, and said that it was Her Majesty's booty, and asked her to accept it as a trophy. It was just delightful. But after that, she was killed in close combat. Does that mean Sylvia will survive? But after that, she dropped dead too. Then next was Henry Jacques. Here he came. The mistress pointed a bow and arrow at him. While he asked, how dare the lousy girl do this to his mother? At that moment, mistress had already hit his shoulder. She hit him so that the poison would have already penetrated his body. But what is it? It's so hot. It feels like my muscles are about to tear. It hurts. Then mademoiselle fell to the ground. What's going on? Why was the protagonist in that state? She was in pain. She was asking for someone to help. Mommy's enemy. Henry said he was going to kill her. No, my lady didn't want to die. At that moment, the emperor stabbed the marquis. His majesty said his consort would not die. Madame said she was in pain. Pain? It's a drug. The remedy she took allowed her to go beyond the limits of human capacity. It increased excitement and eliminated fear. Let the protagonist just imagine what would have happened if he had not appeared at the right moment. After all, this drug has a drawback. It overloads the body and can suddenly lose its effectiveness. That's why it can't be used for military purposes. Ah, another medicine. Mr. asked her not to look at her like that. Then he drank it and kissed his wife. She did seem to feel better. Thanks to the girl, he had fun. Milady could have taken a look. It's all her loot. Now she's a full-fledged citizen of the Actalus. Tonight's banquet will be dedicated to her. To her as the newest full-fledged citizen of their empire? The emperor asked for the gentleman's attention. The empress personally caught the prey. Today's hunt was complete. She was now a full-fledged resident of the Actalus. No matter how you look at it, the people of Actalus worship only strength. Their attitude towards the lady has changed since that day. And now everyone began to say that the empress is really worthy of their emperor. Worthy! Ha 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 ha! The master laughed. Damn it! But the man said that in that case, the evening banquet would be dedicated to the empress. Her majesty has arrived. Thank goodness my lady had barely pulled on that outfit. My lord has asked her to come and sit there. Yes, of course. Mademoiselle asked why her spouse was looking at her like that. 
It was simply that Madame was delightful. The girl was grateful. Wouldn't she even ask why? Angie didn't know exactly what he meant, but Miss was grateful for His Majesty's compliment. Ha! The girl was getting more and more graceful every day. He noticed it more and more each day. The young man seemed to have memorized her face now. What? Memorizing faces is not a supernatural human skill. But in the book, Raniero couldn't do it. Hospital thought it was only because he was an emperor. But at the same time, doesn't such a wise man pay attention to weapons? The protagonist asked the empress to come to him. Was he sick? Why did he remember the girl? What was his consort thinking so passionately about? And nothing. What's he doing all of a sudden? Did Madame think the emperor didn't notice? Lady's head, he's still dizzy from those medicines. Oh, the man just couldn't stand liars. We must pull ourselves together. Domina has forgotten how Raniero likes to disfigure the first dance. No need to provoke him further. My lady didn't have time for dance lessons because of the preparations for the hunt. What a relief that Angelica's body remembers the moves. The lady almost stepped on the master's foot. Oh dear, she's going to fall. His hand, no you can't. Milady fell. It was very painful. The protagonist smiled and said that his spouse was a smart girl. That's right, if she grabbed his hand, she would touch his body without permission. Why is everyone staring at them? At that moment, the young man took his wife in his arms and asked if she was hurt. No, she was fine. Indeed, is she not bruised? The emperor might have caught it, but you can't say it out loud. Everyone was engrossed in making new acquaintances. At that moment, Sylvia came in and greeted the empress. What shamelessness! It's Sylvia Jacques. How dare she come to a banquet in honor of Her Majesty the Empress? She seems to have no pride at all. Should she be reminded of what her relatives have done? The man said that the mere sight of this family's daughter hurt his loyalty. He asked to take the girl out of the banquet hall. Who? The main character? For what? For what? She was still asking. And what kind of loyalty is it if she's hurt by such a small thing? Sylvia has proven her loyalty to her mistress. No matter how sinful her family is, she is willing to sacrifice her own blood ties. Doesn't that make Sylvia more loyal than this man? Did the miss seem to have said too much? But at that moment, the emperor laughed and said that the words were very entertaining and thanked that his consort had amused him. But the girl was just making a joke. At this point, everyone present started laughing and saying how funny the joke was. She just had a great sense of humor. Ha ha ha. How embarrassing for the protagonist, after all. Then Sylvia said she was here for her promised reward. Okay. As His Majesty and his consort had promised, the sister of the Marquis of Jacques was now appointed personal maid to the Empress. Thank them. Mistress sat and thought that it was a pity it was not Sylvia who had become Empress. The appointment as her personal maid could have waited until after the banquet, but she preferred to hear the words there, in front of the entire high society. No one will dare to be rude to her now. It is the privilege of the empress personal maid. Well, that's a very clever move. At this moment, the head maid came in and asked if she could allow people to personally greet the empress. Banquets are the best place to make the necessary acquaintances. Mademoiselle will be happy to socialize with each of them. Woo, this day has sucked all the strength out of mistress. Even though it's evening, the sun is still high. Why did my lady end up there? And why did she become empress? At that moment, the emperor came in and said that Madame had done well. What was he talking about? Mistress looked so carefree, even though she killed a man. Not everyone could take it so calmly. He has a point. Self-defense or not, Angie was now a killer, and there's nothing regret can do about it. In fact, were it not for the circumstances, Mademoiselle could not have truly killed a man. She did it to survive and win. So you should thank your husband. For what? If he hadn't killed Henry Jacques, the girl would be dead by now. That's how it is. For the Lord, such entertainment is akin to beetle fights. But ants have a reason to fight. They had no reason to fight. That's why Master drugged his wife. It's a fun that can't be replaced by anything. Even knowing the consequences, the Lord felt no guilt. He was just enjoying every moment. He just didn't expect it to turn out this way. Will the protagonist try to escape? Will she scream in terror? But when, instead of drowning in the darkness, Angie cheerfully entered the hall in the dress given to him. The protagonist immediately felt a slight shiver. Only then did he really see the girl's features. How strange. The man held out his hand to the lady and offered to return. And the lady was fine with that. It was the first time the gentleman could recognize someone's face, and it was the face of some weakling. Ah, 
This is what the Imperial Palace looks like. This place, a spacious deserted room with a single window. This is the Raniero secret chamber. Miss knew about it from the book, but who would have thought she would be there with the emperor? My goodness, why is he undressing in such a secret place? The young man stood with his bare torso and asked mistress if she liked it. Afterwards, he pressed her against the wall and kissed her. My lady asked me to wait. Should he stop? Hmm. Mr. distanced himself and got in the pool and told his spouse to join in. Uh, it's hot in there. Master said to put her feet in the water. She'll get used to it soon. Why did the protagonist show her the secret imperial bedroom in the first place? There's that look on his face again. His majesty lowered himself into the water. Ah, her dress. Let Miss just forget about it. Well, is the water still hot? No, it's just the pose that bothers her. The man likes this noble trait of hers, but now it's a little annoying. He allowed Angie, so Mademoiselle wrapped her arms around his neck and her legs around his body and held on. The main character didn't actually let the girl fall asleep. She's so willful. The young man realized that even if he closed his eyes, he would still see her image. Now she could rightfully be considered an inhabitant of the Actalus. From now on, people would treat her with respect. A girl who took up arms only a month ago managed to overpower more experienced people and successfully complete the hunt. That means she has great potential. And no ah, no please. That's what the main character was saying in the seance. What? Had a nightmare? The man kissed her at this point and Miss bit his lower lip. In the protagonist's dream, a headless prey was stalking her. She had an axe. Now she was so scared. Mr. hugged her and told her everything was all right. Angie, Angie, Angie. Was she ignoring the emperor? Oh, my lady apologized. She didn't hear her being awakened. She was now a citizen of Actalus, recognized and adored by all. The master ordered her to wash and change her clothes before apologizing. Yes, of course. The young men were having breakfast. That stare, too burdensome. How uncomfortable to have breakfast in the main palace. Then the girl told his majesty that she wanted to go home. Oh, that she said, you should say to the Empress Palace. Isn't this the girl's house? Madame apologized and said she was talking nonsense because she hadn't woken up yet. Did the lady sleep well? My lady said that today was the day that Sylvia would enter the Empress's palace. As its mistress, she was very anxious. Didn't she just want to go home? Wow, he knows everything, and he's just laughing at the mistress. Oh, what's that wound on his lip? It wasn't there yesterday. Milady apologized if her look was too harsh. She was just a little worried. There was blood caked on his lip. Since she was so worried, she might as well take a closer look. She did it, didn't she? What? Really? Does Mademoiselle look like a madwoman? Between, yes, I think it was her, and I don't think she's capable of it. Which should she choose now? Well... The girl said that she didn't think it was possible. Why did she think that? If the lady had dared to wound the emperor, she doubted her head would still be on her shoulders. That's the way it is. Right, the abrasion on the protagonist's face. That is, of course, a horrible crime. Then it should be punished accordingly. Is he right? Yeah, he's right. Huh? That's why the protagonist couldn't send Angie home. The person who hurt his lips should be punished. The girl was guilty, but she also wanted to return to the empress's palace. Instead, Mademoiselle will be by his side. What's what? Every morning the Emperor parses letters from other countries. During the day he has meetings, and at night he trains. And when can Miss leave? Will there be an opportunity to sneak out during his negotiations? Raniero asked. Why was the wife standing there? Because the gentleman himself told her to stand there. He asked why she was standing. Because there were no chairs? At that moment, the protagonist ordered the butler to bring a chair for the Empress. Yes, of course. If the girl continues to stand like this, the man will feel that his spouse is looking down on him. The lady bowed with a response, that it was not her intention, and then apologized. Madame became more docile, didn't she? She could stand up. The master understood her desire not to be above the emperor. However, was she going to kneel when the chair was brought? What would they think of her then? Ha ha ha, my lady just wanted to go home. Cecian, Duchess of Nerma. The answer is obvious. Mister saw his consort trying to think. Is this letter from the Temple of Tunia? The Temple of Tunia, which doesn't even have a master, is in the barren lands of the Northwest. Only those who refused the fertile lands, the foolish and cruel followers of the God of Mercy, remained in that place. The content of the letter was quite simple. At the moment, relations between the Actalus Empire and the Kingdom of Sambinia were rather strained. 
The reason for this lay in the empire itself. The young man thought about the fact that they were asking for help in a benevolent way dot dot dot. It wasn't worth his attention from the word go. All these letters are pretty boring. Empress, hey, Empress, is she out of her mind? The protagonist prepared a chair for her, and she immediately fell asleep? After that, the master kissed her and immediately woke her up. What? What happened? The lady just needs to stay awake. Yes, yes, of course. Milady apologized. Ranier told her to speak. Well, couldn't he give her some work to do? Or let her look at the letters his majesty has already read? Hmm, hmm. She said something cute. It was unexpected. Of course, the empress has the right to know how things are going in the state, but it's not time yet. W what does that mean? Is the man angry? Did Milady make a mistake? Oh, her thoughts were written right on her face. This amuses the protagonist, so he decides to leave it at that. Raniero carried the mistress with him all day long. It got to the point where she was by his side during meals and political meetings, and even during his night practice. Only after all this did the young man let her go. Because of that emperor... Mademoiselle had been on edge for two days. At that moment, the duchess asked, Was she cold? Even though it's summer, the nights are still chilly. Thank her. The woman said it was wonderful to see the main characters together. Well, it may indeed seem that way to the public, but my lady completely disagrees. The only thing she wanted was to receive no attention from the emperor, and originally she was going to throw Sylvia some sort of welcome party, all because of this Ragniero. The maid said that Madame's hunting yesterday was truly praiseworthy. She had no idea how much the maid had been excited. To be honest, Mademoiselle is truly beloved by everyone in the empire, Everyone is looking forward to meeting Her Majesty. The banquets that were canceled. That's right, there was something like that. Madame understood. The woman is overjoyed. Maybe it's wrong to do this, but she's been waiting for this moment for a long time. So she let the rumors slip into the social circles. What did the Duchess say exactly? That the Empress was a very sincere person. At the beginning of next month, they will be able to talk to her themselves. It's an opportunity not everyone gets. No more than three weeks left, right? Ha <laughs> ha, well, thank you. Judging from the atmosphere inside and outside the palace, after her official debut, she would also be responsible for the affairs of the Imperial Palace, and the missus would support her both mentally and physically. Even if the protagonist became a member of high society, honestly, she didn't have a single advantage. That's what she thought, at least. Once the summer solstice festival is over, she'll have to do something else, and when to come up with an escape plan.